So thank you also for the invitation to this webinar. Thank you for the invitation to the whole project. Uh, I would like to start maybe with explanation of these two pictures. I'm uh, it's my from my maybe field research on the streets of uh, Czech Republic. The first one and it's can, this both picture can demonstrate something like a shift in the development or or maybe development trends in uh, extreme right in the Czech Republic. You can see the you can first uh, is the the the, the white power. Uh, also, it's connected to the to the maybe historical neo Nazism in 1990s in the first decade of the 21st century. Also, with this maybe some subculture seen at this with this imitation of traditional Nazism and and Western neo Nazism. How recently we can see this development uh, towards the towards the not very clear uh, ideologies uh, uh, which are connected maybe with all these this, uh, war views are connected with some anti-Semitic background with criticism towards US, towards Israel, towards this uh, world conspirations, etc. because it is it is connected with various conspirative narratives, etc. And also some parts of this uh, new extreme right or then we can talk about the about the scene on the age between or the border between extreme right and extreme left. Sometimes it's it's really flexible this this this, this borderline between both of these scenes, and we can really see recently this uh, strange development towards some maybe uh, hateful protest movement. How this movement it's difficult to categorize from the point of view of extreme right or, or extreme left. On the other hand, I still see more extreme right elements in this movement, despite the fact that they sometimes use also, for example, the people in this movement sometimes use also, also communist symbolism, etc. So this may be explanation of this of this uh, two images here. Uh, and uh, now I would like to turn back to some historical legacies of the of the uh, rising extremist violence in the Czech Republic. Uh, generally, we can see this. Uh, legacies or maybe traditions or for some uh, groupings in uh, various fascist and Nazi uh, movements in the so-called First Czechoslovak Republic in the 90, between 1918 to 1938, uh, including uh, some paramilitary groupings. Uh, what is, for example, interesting group, uh, which I, was, I can mention as an interesting group from this period, is a small uh, legion of Black, Black Eagle, uh, which uh, uh, was created by some uh, maybe Russian immigrants, however, also Czech fascists and communists were member of this small uh, violent group. In the uh, in the in the authoritarian, rising authoritarian Second Czechoslovak Republic, uh, which uh, or exists only several months between between uh, 1938, between October 1938 and March 1939, we can see here also some violent activities, including anti-Semitic bomb campaign led by the by the far right group uh, Flag Vlaika. Uh, and then the horrible events during the Second World War, uh, which were connected with the existence of the so-called protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia, and uh, also with the Gauss Sudetenland in the in the former Czech borderlands, and it is connected with Jewish as well as uh, with uh, Roma Holocaust on on the on, on the Czech territory. Then we can see some some uh, terrorist and guerrilla violence after the. Second World War, including the Nazi units Werwolf and some small plots in the Third Czechoslovak Republic, and really decline of far right violence or extreme right violence during the during the communist era. However, we can identify also some some maybe small youngsters gangs uh, in 1960s and also in 1980s. Uh, if you look to the development after the fall of uh, called regime of real socialism in the, in the, in in Czechoslovakia in 1990s we can observe the rise of subculture violence uh, connected mostly with uh, rising extremist uh, streams in the skinhead subculture targets were mostly roma foreigners partially also lgbt community uh, we can see really the grow of this uh, violence in uh, as i said in 1990s then in the first decade of the 20 21st century. Uh, as an example of this of this activity, we can mention the arson attacks uh, against the 
against the Roma in a small town, Vitkov in, uh, in Silesia or North Moravia in 2009. A uh, small Roma girl at the time was buried on the 80% of her, of her, of her body. Uh, then, uh, the first and second uh, decade of the 21st century were anti-Roma violent demonstrations and riots typical of, of the Czech Republic. And uh, after the after the start of the so-called migration crisis in the mid of the second decade of the 21st century, we can observe the rise of some uh, anti-Muslim and anti-migrant uh, hate speech, and also several several violent acts, including the so so-called false flag attacks committed by one by one. Uh, Private activist uh, Mr. Balda, he was later sentenced due to the terrorism because he tried to derelay train uh, in uh, close to the city of Mlada Boleslav, and he lay, he he tried to uh, maybe present his attack as a attack of the Muslims in the Czech Republic it was a false flag attack. He tried to maybe. Um, Let's say his, his goal was to start awareness towards the threat of Muslims attack. So, so it was really felt that like attack motivated by by, by anti-Islamic beliefs of this of this perpetrator. And uh, last but not least, we can mention also some violent demonstrations, threats, or vandalism during the related to the to the uh, to the rejection of opponents towards the governmental uh, measures against the COVID nineteen pandemics. Generally, if I can maybe summarize the recent uh, state of threat of, of, uh, of the far right violence in the Czech Republic, we can maybe see this uh, maybe some impact of these historical legacies on contemporary scene. We can see also the, 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 the traditional ideologies and, and modus operandi. However, as Hans and also you guys said uh, in, in uh, their uh, Presentations and introduction to this to this webinar, we can see also this new ideological trends and also modus operandi of specific groupings and entities. If I can maybe summarize the threat of the of the violent right extremism, I can mention this uh, this threat of plan lone wolf small or small cells attacks. Uh, last year, were sentenced or was sentenced one uh, perpetrator of uh, terrorist plot. The second is still is, is still ongoing trial, as I as I know. Uh, they 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 are there were two youngsters who were planning the the attack uh, at the Israeli and U.S. embassy in 2022, uh, 25. I'm sorry, uh, probably uh, to the anniversary of the attacks of uh, Timothy McVeigh in Oklahoma City in 1990, 1995. Uh, but uh, fortunately, this 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 plot was stopped by the Czech security institutions and police. Uh, generally, what was was a recent, maybe from my point of view, most serious uh, uh, violent threat. Uh, there are these not systematically repeated hate crimes. How we can see also sometimes violence, fortunately against small scale violence uh, during some demonstrations and uh, attacks at political opponents. We still have also this uh, paramilitary and vigilance scene, uh, as already was mentioned in Slovakia by Uri. How recently I, I think that this scene in the Czech Republic is weaker than, for example, in, in Slovakia or in Hungary. And last but not least, we can mention of, also the phenomenon of the extreme right foreign fighters. Against, again, uh, we, can, we can hear maybe in individual cases, it is difficult. To categorize if the if the guy is really far right, far left, this is a mixture of some hateful opinions towards the contemporary political regime, how also with some sympathies towards the towards the former regime, communist regime, etc. etc. So sometimes it's really difficult to identify the ideology, the ideological background of this of this foreign fighters. Uh, now I want to briefly describe the contemporary right extremist scene. The, maybe the general right extremist scene, not only violent, as I want to emphasize that now I'm talking not only about the violent scene, but about the extreme right uh, as uh, such, and also, also with non violent parts. Uh, generally, we can see now the rise of some anti system protest movement, their protest against the 
Czech involvement in the war in Ukraine, against the energy policy of contemporary government, against the maybe uh, social policy, etc., etc. They, in some, they do not have clear ideological background. It's a mixture of various, various maybe traditional uh, extremists and radicals, or also with some uh, part of the movement without some deeper uh, historical or ideological roots. Uh, we can see also part of sympathizers, candidates, and members of the right-wing populist parties, including uh, the uh, including the strongest party, Freedom and Direct Democracy, it is represented in Parliament. This radical party uh, has also some supporters, which can be labeled as as, as right-wing extremists. Uh, then we have also the phenomenon which is maybe visible, however, fortunately, not so weak. As for example, Reichsbürger uh, in Germany, but they are so-called Czechoslovak citizens. They are people who don't uh, recognize the the dissolution of, Czech of Czechoslovakia at uh, uh, the end of 1992, and they now argue that that still are citizens of Czechoslovakia, the Czech Republic, according to this those people is only something like corporation, etc. And they sometimes use also some small scale riots, for example, during the trials. Uh, uh, this, this 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 members of 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 the of the, or, of, the of the organizations which belong to the to this to this to this movement. Then we can see still also these traditional right wing extremist groupings. For example, uh, workers use uh, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a youth organization of the of the of the workers party or social justice. Then small uh, national. Democracy is maybe part, part of some pan Slavic uh, orientation. How we can see also the neo Nazi bloc sphere, still some, some people who, who, are, who are maybe traditional Czech neo Nazi or uh, they are connected with legacies of uh, Czech collaboration with Nazis during the Second World War. And uh, if I can identify some violent potential, it could be connected with some of the NS hooligan or national socialist or neo-Nazi hooligan uh, gangs connected with some with some uh, football clubs. Also, uh, so then also we can observe uh, this uh, several individuals connected to this new neo-Nazi accelerationism. Uh, they are mostly youngsters. Fortunately, we do not have such case as in Slovakia. This uh, this uh, terrorist attack uh, from last year uh, against the members of the LGBT community. But we can see some links between the scenes in both countries. And finally, I can mention also the presence and activities of some foreign arriving extremists on the Czech territory. Generally, the scene is mostly non-violent. The level of far right violence is relatively low in comparison with some countries, but still we can see here the potential for future development of violent activities. And of course, uh, this hate speech can stimulate this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this violent, violent events. Uh, I would like to maybe mention also some specific issue and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, interconnections between Slovak extreme right and, and Czech Republic, because you know, it's a third presentation uh, within the scope of this project, and I would like to maybe add also something new to the to the to the, to the previous findings. Uh, firstly, we can we can look to the cooperation of Slovak extreme right with Czech partners. In this sense, uh, we can see this cooperation mostly in this uh, in this non-violence scene. And I can mention, for example, the 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 office of the People's Party our Slovakia in Prague, uh, which was uh, established in cooperation with this already mentioned. Uh, the Workers' Party of Social Justice. I think that this office is not very active, uh, also due to the split in, in the in the LSNS, but it was maybe an interesting, uh, interesting event in this sense. Then we can see various interconnections of this pro Kremlin intolerance spectrum, including this already mentioned alternative media scene, including some MC clubs and uh, and all these uh, paramilitaries. And uh, on the other hand, we can see also some links between ultra dogmatic Christian networks with some affiliation to, to extreme right. So this, this is a cooperation between Czech and Slovak partners. But due to the presence of many Slovaks in the Czech Republic, we can see also some uh, autonomous activity in the sense of the, that they are not 
probably not directly connected to the to the Czech uh, partners of this uh, of the Slovak movements. And it was, for example, the the attempt to establish so-called Moravian cons conscripts as a branch of the Slovak conscripts. Uh, but uh, Uri Kurus already mentioned this this uh, this Slovak recruits or Slovak Slovak conscripts. It depends on on translation of of this uh, of this term Branci from Slovak language. But there was also short uh, time existed uh, existing uh, uh, branch of this of this uh, organization in close to Brno in Moravia, the eastern part of the Czech Republic, uh, maybe inspired by this Slovak conscripts. Then we can mention that also one uh, very active guy from Slovakia uh, who was uh, active in this terrorgram networks, and, and he, he was probably inspiration for the for this uh, for this murder from uh, from um, uh, Zamoská street in Bratislava. Uh, Pavel Benadík he sp spent some time as a student in in Brno. So so this again this presence of Slovaks uh, this far right background also in the in the Czech Republic. And what is not confirmed, I can mention it also all, only as a speculation. So sorry for uh, uh, sorry for if it's not true, then then I would like to apologize for this. But there are some rumors that that uh, in Slovakia was established very small branch of the of the uh, order of nine angles from from originally neo-Nazi satanist organization from United Kingdom, but allegedly there is some branch in Slovakia and allegedly some of these guys have also links to the to the to the environment in the Czech Republic. But once again it is not confirmed so it's maybe you can take it all, all, all as a uh, as a curiosity maybe. So if I can conclude my 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 presentation I would like to really quote it from the from the conclusion of my contribution to the to the volume published by Globsec and uh, CEP. So generally, I can, can maybe introduce this conclusion with the sentence that the violent right extremist scene is active in the Czech Republic. However, these parade groups remain large, largely unorganized. This, this scene is now without some strong uh, unified organization. The movement can be perhaps best characterized as a loose network of small cells, freelancers, and gangs that conduct online campaigns to mobilize individual or, or mass violent actions. We are talking now about this violence scene. Given this heterogeneous network and the lack of formal organizational structures, it is not possible to put together a meaningful list of catalog of rising extremist violent, or violent organizations, in contrast, for example, to the 1990s and, 2000, uh, and, and the first decade of, of, the, of, the, uh, of the 21st century. However, the permanent activity of populist radical anti-Western forces, supported by the so-called disinformation scene and foreign hybrid interference, interference create a milieu for individual and group radicalization towards violent right-wing extremism. And due to this fact, this situation requires fostering adequate resilience and countering violent extremism. I can conclude this also with explanation of the meaning of this picture. I took this picture last, maybe uh, Saturday, in uh, one, one town in Bohemia, in Kolin, and there are stickers of the football hooligans of the Sparta Prague, and they, they, they are strongly anti-LGBT. You can see that the sticker with, uh, where is written, uh, uh, three colors are enough. Uh, deer, and uh, you can see this maybe symbolic violent act against the against the symbol of the of the LGBT. So still, we can see that these violent tendencies are existing in various uh, milieu in the various in the Czech Republic. Thank you for your attention.